As you can probably tell by the sound of my voice, I am a little sick today, but we're gonna persevere. Let's jump into it. What is going on, everybody? And yes, I am a little sick. I've been sick for the past couple days. Uh, I did the COVID test thing and all that. I I'm not COVID uh, positive, so that is a good thing, but definitely feeling a little under the weather, but uh, I'm kind of on the mend now. My voice is still really shot, but we're gonna persevere so we can get some gameplay up for you guys this weekend. Uh, I do really appreciate everybody's support on the gameplay recently. We have had some massive, massive pushes lately, it seems, and so thank you guys so much. One thing I want to mention, tomorrow is the Glorious Sunrise Podcast Episode 4. You're going to want to watch that because this one's going to really impact the channel. Uh, so please do keep an eye out for that. That's 6 a.m. Eastern is when that will go up. You can listen on uh, here on YouTube, on the Spotify app, or on the podcast app. So... Uh, wherever you normally listen to podcasts for the most part. But let's talk about today's deck, guys. This is a test deck for sure. This is something that I just threw together. Uh, been playtesting a little bit, did make a couple of changes, but it's basically a rabble-rousing deck. Uh, so the idea here is that whenever you attack with one or more creatures, you get that many 1-1 one, one green, uh, green and white citizen creature tokens. If you control 10 or more, you get to play the hideaway card uh, for free, which is really sick. So... Uh, my thought was if we can team that up uh, with things like Adeline, Wedding Announcement, Scoot Swarm, we should, oh, and Felidar Retreat, we should be able to, to get to 10 pretty quickly, pretty easily. We do have a Seeker's Chariot, the Wandering Emperor, uh, Ren and Seven, all these things kind of create tokens for us. We do ramp a little bit with Topiary Stomper, uh, with the Gallag Readers, as well as Prosperous Innkeeper, and then Neverwinter Dryad. This has quickly kind of become one of my go-to cards. Uh, it triggers landfall super well, which is, excuse me, obviously important with Scoot Swarm. Uh, but it also just guarantees that we're hitting our land drops, uh, which we're running only 24 lands here. So uh, we definitely need to hit our land drops. Uh, I, 24 may not be the right amount. I think you could go up a little bit, especially when you do have Felidar Retreat and Scoot Swarm. Uh, kind of overvalues your lands normally. Uh, but the idea is basically get a bunch of counters down, or a bunch of tokens down and then rabble rousing out some free stuff. All of the cards are pretty useful cards. Uh, there's not a whole lot of like dead stuff later in the game. Uh, because, you know, even if you had a Felidar retreat, okay, great. Well, let me play a land and now all of a sudden it's really good. Wandering Emperor, Seeker's Chariot, uh, Ren and Seven, all very, very good things. And so... Uh, I'm pretty excited to try this one out. Again, this is really a test. I know a lot of these token decks generally go Naya right now. Uh, and so I will be testing that out at some point down the line. But today, I thought I would just try my own version of the list with the Selesnia package. So again, probably not going to be as consistent or as good, but I just wanted to see how things go. Uh, so I'm setting this up for a potential failure, but it's okay if we do. We're just here to have some fun. Uh, again, guys, please make sure you watch the podcast tomorrow. It will be a big one. And thank you guys so much for uh, supporting the channel and everything right now. It's been really, really awesome. Let's jump into some games. Let's see how it goes. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty easy keep. We've got a Neverwinter Dryad that we can um, throw out there. God, my voice is terrible today. Uh, but this will allow us to uh, get that extra land if we so choose. So let's go ahead. Let's attack. Um, I think I'm just going to leave up the Dryad. I'm not going to worry about... Um, We'll probably end up sacking this at the end of the turn, but this just guarantees us that we've got the lands that we need, so that's pretty relevant. Um, yep, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. Okay, so uh, this is then a... Ooh, very good. Um, I'm not going to go that route, though. I am going to go Felidar Retreat. This just has so much value long term. If we draw any land this upcoming turn, it obviously means we get a 2 2. We can throw then the Ren and Seven out. Like, it just gives us a lot of options. That's definitely a frustrating card, uh, no doubt about it, but we'll see what happens. Um, okay. So, how do we want to do this? I think it's this. Uh, we'll throw a 2 2 out there. Let's go ahead and play the Ren, uh, and I'm just going to minus it. It's just a really big thing uh, that they're going to have a harder time blocking or, or attacking with or into. Excuse me. Goodness gracious, guys. It's been it's been a couple days since I recorded because I haven't been feeling well. So here we are. All right. So let's see what they want to do. Uh, this is a pretty solid 
start, honestly. I'm pretty happy with this. So they can certainly attack here, uh, which is good, but I honestly think I just block. I'm not really interested in losing the Ren. Uh, if they do have a Vanishing Burst, that's going to suck, but they are going to have to use it. And between that and Felidar Retreat, they probably don't have great options. Wow, they just play Meat Hook for zero. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. All right, so let's go ahead, grab a couple lands here. That's pretty good. All right, so let's be smart. Let's do this. Let's do this. And then let's do this. Uh, I'm going to throw some tokens out. Uh, and then we actually just get to play a Neverwinter Dryad too. I guess we should have done it with the Neverwinter Dryad first. So technically we would have had that option, but I mean, Again, the rebuild here is quite good. Uh, kind of sucks for them that they didn't use the Meat Hook Massacre this this turn. They could have swept for two. Maybe they still can. I have no idea. Uh, if they can, that's really good, but it looks like they're not. All right, sick. Um, I think we just continue plussing with the Ren. I'm not going to... I mean, we could go really crazy and do some ridiculous stuff, but I just don't think we need to. Um we could <laughs> we could do some really broken stuff this turn um do we want to kind of i'm gonna play the second ren all right hear me out here <laughs> okay that's very good um sure that's very very good so they actually get to throw this back into our hands so they're they're basically stalling uh, which is relevant. I mean, that makes it a little bit harder for us, for sure. Um, but I'm not really that worried about it. Uh, the fact that this only goes back to our hand is, like, not that big of a deal. Um, let's throw some counters around. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think I'm going to sack this. So they gain a life. I guess technically we should wait, but I think it's fine. Uh, <laughs> we'll put some counters on everything. I mean, we're doing a pretty good job of building up the board here. That is for sure. Uh, the question is, do we attack with the with these two? I'm going to say no. My thing is, if they have a land and a meat hook massacre, they're going to have to basically use it here. And I kind of want to force them into that. Uh, so we'll see. I think they would have done it last turn if they could have, though. So I'm not really super concerned. All right, they did have a land. Cool. Well, let's see. Um, I do like this deck a lot. It play patterns really, really well. Um, whenever you attack, target attacking creature. This is a number of attacking creatures. Okay. That's fine. I'm all too happy to block this. It really doesn't matter that much. Um, the question becomes, do we... What's the safest play? Um, we'll see. They can't meat hook, which is great. Um, so I'm just going to double block it with two of these little scoot swarms. I want to keep the life gain around with the innkeeper. I think that's pretty relevant. Uh, I don't really want them exiling more cards from our graveyard consistently because that's that's a win condition for them. So let's go ahead and remove that possibility from the uh, the equation. All right. Uh, so they don't have enough mana left open for basically anything that important. So let's minus. Um. Let's play land. This should be really good. Uh, we should be able to win this turn, or at least get very, very close. Um, we may not just 100% win, but we should be able to get there. Uh, let's go ahead and Ren. Uh, we'll definitely keep this one. Let's throw a couple lands onto the battlefield. Gives us two more. <laughs> uh, this is sick. This deck is really fun. Um, I don't think every game would ever work out. Wow, that's loud. Would ever work out this way. Uh, 
but this is really, really fun. Uh, yeah, and we just gain a crap load of life, which is pretty solid. <laughs> so again, we should be able to deal enough this turn, I think. I don't know. We'll see. I'm just going to attack with all and force the issue. These all have vigilance as well, which is pretty sick. Um, we're at 56 life. We also have a wandering emperor available like at any time. So this is pretty good. Cool. No. I'm wondering if they're doing the math or if they're just, uh, all right, cool. I'm gonna kill everything, uh, and deal. All right, get them down to four. That's pretty good. Uh, so between these, like, basically they could sweep uh which would be very good but we do have the wandering emperor that we can flash out we also have a renin seven which they probably can't deal with all of this they could probably deal with the creatures but i doubt they can deal with the ren yeah so they sweep for four which is good uh but doesn't matter oh we do they do gain a lot of life i suppose don't they all right cool that's all fine. They gain so much life. Wow. All right, six. So I'm just going to throw the Wandering Emperor out. Let's throw a 2-2 two -two with Vigilance out. It's going to gain us a life. Uh, that's pretty good. Let's plus up. I think plusing is the right call. Um, we really haven't gotten to use the, <laughs> the Rabble Rousing, have we? All right, let's... Uh, bolster up the board here people um i'm gonna go ahead and do this just for the sake of why not all right another lamp that's fine let's go ahead and i mean does it matter uh no it does not all right let's attack so i mean again we have got yeah a lot of stuff we get them exactly perfect that was amazing great game one we really got to showcase the deck not the rabble rousing funny enough but that's okay let's jump into a game two what's up guys before we jump into the next game i just want to remind you if you would like to pick up this month's patreon rewards feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves all right guys here we are for game number two uh this is a bit of a sketchy hand um hmm it's a bit of a it's it's like a little too late game i feel like the question is can we like we've got prosperous innkeeper we've got gala greeters we've also got neverwinter dryad all of which are great early game kind of things uh is it worth it to mulligan down to try and get something there i feel like probably i mean as it stands we're not doing anything until turn three and a turn three scoot swarm by itself is like kind of terrible um we don't even have the fourth land to guarantee a Felidar retreat. Granted, in, what, three, four turns, we should be able to draw one. I don't know. I think we mulligan. I think we mulligan. But we'll see what the opponent does, too. Apparently, they're really, really in the tank on this one. Uh, guys, I just want to say a huge, again, a huge, huge thank you. I've been keeping track of the analytics of our, uh, our YouTube channel. And, like, we just finished a giveaway this past week. Uh, and, yeah, last week. Uh, let's mulligan. Oh, wow. Um, okay, well, I guess we'll just keep this because we don't have a choice at this point. I don't want to go down to five. Um, so, yeah, we, we just finished up a giveaway not too long ago, but even after the giveaway, we've been really, really gaining a substantial uh, number of subscribers, which is amazing to me. Uh, absolutely fascinating. And so I just want to say from everybody here, a huge thank you. If you're new to the It Resolves community, first of all, welcome. Uh, I apologize for my voice today, uh, but if this is your first time watching the channel, like it really does mean a lot to us to have you here. Uh, we are a relatively small channel, and so any and all support is really, really appreciated, uh, more so than you guys could possibly imagine. Uh, and so I do really encourage if you're not already or if you're just watching for the first time, please make sure you subscribe. It would mean a ton to me. Uh, and I know to uh, to everybody else with the It Resolves community, we've got 
a lot of really cool stuff coming up very, very soon. So I do want to encourage everybody to, uh, to hang out and have some fun. As much as I really want to use this for a kill spell, I just don't think we can. Uh, let's create a tapped treasure token. And most likely we're just going to end up sacking the dryad. Uh, to grab a land and then that sets us up pretty well for a rabble rousing uh, which I mean against this board we're not going to do much blocking so uh, the wandering emperor may also be a necessity though here to be honest uh, just to kind of kill some of these guys yeah, let's go ahead and do this excellent um, just to get rid of some stuff here is pretty important um So what do we do? What do we do? Uh, I mean, I do think it's kind of literally, well, if we do this, yeah. So if we do that, we can still play the wandering emperor. So let's do that. Um, hmm. I guess we'll do the trapped treasure token. I'm not really sure what the right call there is, to be honest. Um, I think we just passed. We can flash this out uh, at, in response to their next angel, which I imagine they're going to have an angel. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and do this. This does get them to their life total that they need, though. Uh, oh, this is stupid. Why did I do this? <laughs> All right, sick. Uh, that was a mistake. Definitely, definitely a mistake. Uh, what we should have done is waited, but that's okay. So now they attack. We do get to activate, I believe, in response to kill a Righteous Valkyrie, which is relevant. Yeah, definite misplay on my end, though. That's okay. I'm sick. I have an excuse. What's your excuse? <laughs> All right. They're just going to attack us. Wow. All right, so we definitely just exile one of these. Uh, that's gonna diminish the amount of life that we lose very much, but we're still pretty dead. <laughs> um, yeah, so. I think we do this to cash this in. Gonna gain some life there. Uh, so we could do that, play land, or we can rabble rousing. Does it seem as good? Let's do this. I don't know. I have no clue if this is the right call or not. Probably not, but that's fine. We get to pull off all of these, which is pretty good. Um, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we're just dead, right? They have... Yeah, they have plenty to kill us. All right, I'm just going to concede here, guys. Let's jump into a game three. Let's see if we can get another win. All right, guys, here we are for our next game. And uh, yeah, I actually do think we keep this. Despite not having white mana, the Prosperous Innkeeper plus Gallagreeters kind of solves that problem for us. Uh, the wedding announcement is also really, really good as early as possible. So I'm feeling okay about this hand. It's not great. Could definitely use a little bit more, but we'll we'll see. Oh, okay, sick. Um... I'm gonna go Gala Greeters. We have the land to guarantee the wedding announcement comes down next turn, so like this is pretty straightforward. Um, possible, yeah, it looks like this is gonna be a very annoying matchup for us, but it's okay. Not gonna attack. Get that. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five mana available. Nah, I'm actually going to go for the plus one, plus one. Here's the thing. The way we outpace this deck, at least in practice, is to just try and buff up the Gala Greeters enough, uh, along with the wedding announcement and just the counters, to get to a point where it's like, okay, you basically can trade with anything that they're putting out there. Um, this also punishes a hand where they just kept a Kami of Transience without a rune of any kind. That solves their problem most likely, though, so they should be okay here. Um, yeah, they get a lot of damage off with this. Uh, that's fine. We just take four. Nothing too crazy there. But the land is good. Um, so we can do this. Uh, I think we wait on the scoot. 
right? Probably. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, let's do the one one. Again, just trying to uh, basically stave off as much as we possibly can. Let's gain a couple life and let's throw one one here. Um, I'm not going to attack here. So then we get a treasure token and we'll gain a couple more life. So again, this is really showing off the power level of like the synergies here. Uh, with the Gallag Readers as well as the Innkeepers, we're gaining a lot of life back. And so in the early turns of the game, especially against... Oh. All right. We did it. Well, I was going to say, in the early turns of the game, we can kind of set up and set up. And then against a deck like the Naya Runes deck or the Selesnya Runes deck, it's pretty easy to just outpace. Um, granted, the Kami of Transients can do the same. So we just have to balance that. But that worked out really well. I think we got time for one more game. Let's see if we can do it. All right, guys, here we are for our th fourth game. Fourth game. Uh, we're two and one right now. This is, I think, an easy keep. Uh, we've got a turn two innkeeper, technically a turn three Asika's Chariot if we want it. Uh, alternatively, we can go Topiary Stomper, but I actually really, really like this hand. The Topiary Stomper works so well with Scoot Swarm as well. If you can get Scoot Swarm out first, obviously it's very good. So let's go ahead, Cave. We'll Prosperous Innkeeper. We also get to... The Basaju is so important in a lot of matchups right now. Uh, in particular, obviously, the Runes deck. But it's uh, it's very good against a lot of stuff. Like, it kills Restorations. It kills, I don't know, just tons of things. Looks like we're Riveteers or Jund. Whatever you want to call it. Ooh. Uh, do I like that more than a Seeker's Chariot? I actually think I do. Seeker's Chariot is very, very good, but the long-term value of getting this down as soon as possible seems pretty reasonable. Okay. That's honestly kind of okay. Like, yeah, we we lose out on a little bit of uh, life gain value there, but if they're dealing three damage to kill a 1-1... One -one, oh. I don't know what's happening today. Apparently, nobody wants to get sick, and so they're just conceding. I... I don't know. We're going to call that quits, though. That's four games. Uh, let's jump into the wrap-up. All right, guys. So, again, I just want to reiterate a couple of things. One, this was a test version of this deck. Uh, I think we saw some weaknesses, especially in that game, too. Uh, but I think we actually saw a lot more strengths with this one. Alternatively, we did not get to see Rabble Rousing at all. Uh, we didn't even play it. So... That's kind of odd, uh, but I do think this deck works extraordinarily well. It's just a nice little mid-range deck that ramps into some big stuff towards the end. But truthfully, it's not even that it's big stuff. It just takes advantage of the landfall mechanic really, really well uh, between Scoot Swarm as well as Felidar Retreat to the point where you're basically just building up, you know, as much value as you can. Uh, some cards I would consider including if you're sticking with the Selesnya thing. Uh, Ashaya seems very good uh, just because obviously everything becomes a land all your creatures so you really get to take advantage of that uh some other things like storm the festival are never a bad option uh even things like titan of industry could be quite good although in this case i don't know that it's as necessary to have the titan uh i do think it's a very good card but storm the festival seems a little more likely regardless this is an amazing deck i really really enjoyed it we did get three wins although some of those were a little questionable uh regardless though we did okay with it so i'm actually pretty happy with this i think i would uh continue to kind of tech it out and work with it a little bit but i hope you guys will take some opportunity to do that as well so thank you guys so much for watching again i apologize my voices are really really shot right now uh but we're gonna continue on and hopefully push through I want to remind you, make sure, please, please, please make sure you listen to the Glorious Sunrise podcast tomorrow at 6 a.m. Eastern. It's going to be a very, very important episode. Uh, we have got a lot of big changes coming to the channel, uh, things that are really going to impact the channel very heavily in a very positive way, in my opinion. Uh, and so I do want to share that with you guys. I want you guys to keep up to date on all of that. Um, and some of that will be, well, most of that will be talked about in the podcast. So Thank you guys so much again for all the support recently. I really do appreciate it. You guys are amazing. I love you all. Welcome to the community for all you newcomers. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you later.